Ah, oh, hello. I'm Ed China, and I've just been musing about the fact that ever since the invention of the motor car, manufacturers from around the world have always been striving to come up with the most exhilarating, the most luxurious, the most attention-grabbing vehicles they possibly can. And some 20 years ago, I actually had a go at that myself, and I invented the original street-legal sofa car. Now, it is an interesting vehicle. I'm going to explain a bit more about it, but it is the Casual Loafer. It was very important for me to make sure that the public would be kept guessing. So I wanted to try and hide all of the controls and particularly there are no pedals. Now the thing you actually steer the vehicle with is this pizza pan. Now originally it was a real pizza that was fresh every month or so, but unfortunately used to get nicked or would go mouldy. So we've ended up with a slightly more fake one here, but it looks very good at the moment, even if it's a bit dirty. Now when it comes to pedals, as I say, I haven't got any at all, but the throttle pedal is actually controlled by your knee. Now the idea behind that is obviously it's very easy and casual to do with almost anybody not noticing what's going on, but at the same time you can do that while your foot is up as well. So very relaxing. Now, it is an automatic gearbox, but you still have to choose what gear you're going to be in. So for that, we have a Turkish delight bar, because, of course, having a Turkish, having a laugh, it's dodgy rhyming slang, just like the casual loafer is for sofa. Now, for the brakes, it's a foot brake, but, of course, it's operated with your hand, and that is the drinks can right here. So when I pull on this, obviously, I'm operating the brakes. But what's interesting, I have a kind of a fly-off handbrake, just like those early sports cars. So I've now got a handbrake, but then I just leave, I just do that. Wonderful. Now it's based very loosely on a classic Mini 1275cc petrol engine with an automatic gearbox. Now slightly unconventionally right from the start, I've actually got a front subframe in the back of the car. So it's technically mid-mounted, which is very sporty traditionally. I've also got another front subframe from a Mini in the front of a vehicle right underneath me, which has been slightly narrowed so I can get those wheels into the body of the car. Now when it comes to all the switches to operate the sofa, they're also hidden rather cleverly in the armrest just here. Now there's a row of switches, the very back one operates the fan, just in case things get really, really hot in the engine bay. Then you've got the lights, a few other little bits and pieces, and then of course at the very front we have the starter, and just behind that the ignition, so I can start it like so. So that's ready to go, and of course being street legal, you do have seat belts, very important. But perhaps even more important than that, of course, is going to be some eye protection. That way I can go incognito and I won't go blind all the insects. Right, here we go. Now it's wonderful being out in the countryside. The smells, the sights, the sounds are all so much more visceral. It really is what the sofa is all about. You know, this is the way to experience the planet. I mean, look at the views you get to see, but you're actually in them, you're part of them, because there's no restrictions to your view. It's a wonderful way to see the world. Like any good quality sofa, the covers are changeable, removable, and of course, machine washable. This particular fur is made out of a nylon monofilament fiber, which although when it gets wet, will actually dry very quickly, and the faster you drive, the quicker it will dry. Very handy. As part of being street legal, of course, I need to know what speed I'm doing. And so I've actually hidden the standard Mini Speedo in this little cock here on the coffee table. Now, it's quite fun. It obviously gives me an idea what fuel I've got as well, and of course, whether my lights are on or not. But the interesting thing is, I set the world record for fastest furniture about 20 years ago, about 1998 it was, at 87 miles an hour. We're at the Goodwood circuit, whizzing around, and of course they've got all their little speed cameras there, and that's how Guinness World Records actually found out about this amazing contraption. Now the interesting thing is that since that time, I've actually had a couple of challenges. In fact, I've actually now lost the world record. So we now have somebody with the fastest sofa record at 101 miles an hour, and the fastest furniture record is now 117 miles an hour. So really, I need to start upping my game. Now the casual loafer has been on the road for nearly 20 years and you can imagine after all that time there is a whole heap of things 
I would love to do to improve this vehicle. One of those things is potentially even put it into production if anybody would buy it, let's face it. But the very first thing I could do with changing is actually the fact that because I store this for much of the year these days, during the winter particularly, when it comes to the spring, I want to actually get the car out and go for drive. Obviously being automatic, I can't bump start it. So the battery does need to be in tip top condition. Now obviously I can leave it on charge and make sure that's going to be working. But another really useful thing would be a battery scent. Well, what is it? Well, I'll show you in a second. So this is our clever little battery scent. Now what it does is actually monitor the voltage and the charge state of the battery on your car. It's got a little serial code on the back and the idea is you actually put that into an app on your phone and then that way your phone can actually monitor what's going on with the sense. And of course it does it over time so you get a really good idea of exactly what's going on with your battery if there are any issues with it. Now it's actually quite easy to fit. In fact, you can do it pretty much anywhere. And in this case with the sofa, I need a couple of tools. So the first thing I need to do is actually get to the battery. It's stored just down here on the wing. So I'm just gonna relieve a little tiny bit of the fur. There's our high security little bolt just there. So I'm just gonna undo that. Okay, so here we go. And voila, there we are. There is our trusty battery, which is fantastic. So, so ideally, this wants to go as close to the battery as you can in the location of the car, because what it's gonna be measuring as well is the temperature, so it actually knows what's going on with the battery too. That helps you understand a little bit more about what's going on with the battery. So I'm actually gonna just pop it around here, and all I have to do is connect a positive and negative lead to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. Simple as that. So, before I go anywhere, it's quite nice to actually understand what's going on with our existing battery. So I'm just gonna pull off the two terminals, like so. Quick release things make that much easier. I'm just gonna to have to put that to voltage, a little voltmeter. And then have a little look, see how we're doing. So we've got 13 volts, obviously it's just been for a drive. So as you'd expect, the battery is in reasonable condition. But of course the problem is, when you've left it for six months in storage somewhere, that might not always be the case. So, first thing to do, I'm just literally very simply undo one of these terminals, maybe get rid of the cobwebs. <laughs> right, so just pop the screw through that little ring terminal there, just gonna nip it up again. Make sure it's a good firm connection, like so. Now we do the same thing with the positive terminal, just make sure I can get that lead out of there. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo the terminal again. These just open up in place, and that's now connected. And before I connect, I'm just going to now stick it onto here. Now, as part of the kit, very handy, it comes with either two cable ties or a sticky pad. So, if you look on the back, you can see you can actually feed the cable ties around the back and clamp it to anything that's convenient in the car. In this case, I'm actually going to use this surface here on the sticky pad. simply just pop that onto there like so. Lovely, which is good set, good connection. And pop that there. Obviously it's lovely and clean in here, but that should be fine. Like so. And handily of course I can read the barcode on the top here, which is also great. And then I can now connect that up. And off we go. So all I have to do now is pair this with the phone app and we're good to go. Right, so now I just grab my phone, I open the CTEC app. All I have to do now is just type in the last digits after the 4019. I just have to type in all the rest of those digits. It's a little bit long, but that's because obviously you can have loads and loads and loads of these. So you've got a big car collection, every single one of them can have a battery sensor on there, and then you're going to know the condition of everything that you've actually got in your collection, which is very handy. So then connect. So now the phone is actually going to be connecting with our battery sense device. I'm going to put on, I can choose my name, so I'm going to call this the sofa car. In fact, I'm going to call it the casual sofa because that's actually its name. So now I'm just going to pop into the settings and I can actually turn on the temperature and the voltage. And I can also turn on if the battery status actually changes, you know, quite critically, which is interesting too and also if there's no data that's found. So I'm turning everything on, which is wonderful. So that's great. So 
No, it's just updating. So now, apparently, I've already got 85% of my charge state. Obviously, that's going to take a little longer to actually settle down. And if I look on here, I've got 12.64 volts, and it's 30 degrees centigrade. So that's a pretty awesome way of actually finding out exactly what's going on with the battery. And I can do this any time. I just have to be in Bluetooth range, and then I know exactly what's going on. So I can just wander around past the garage, and I'll know that our sofa is good. Now, it's been a few months since I've fitted the battery since. I've had time to change the covers back to the original leopard print. I've even changed my T-shirt. So if I now click into the app, you can see the casual loafer there. So I click on there, and you can see it's got a 57% charge, which is not ideal. If you look at the very bottom, you can see there's a graph. Now, if you squish your fingers together, you can actually mess with the time or the scale of that graph. And you can see that the last time I used it, it was a nice big spike, and then it's been sort of tailing off ever since then. And in fact, the color of the battery is yellow. And if you look at the little key there, it says charge soon, which is obviously what I need to do next. Now, I've got my MXS 5.0 charger. And one of the fittings on there, of course, is your normal little bulldog clips. But well, unfortunately, my battery is deep in the wing, as we remember, in the bottom of the vehicle. So it's quite hard to get to. Now, a nice little feature of the SeaTech charger is just undo that. You've got a little connector there. If I would now fit a little comfort indicator. It has a little plug. I can plug that into there. This is permanently connected to the sofa, but I can put that in a really convenient place, so like just behind the covers. So clearly, before I can charge this, that is my next job.